In this segment of the uh, sniper day trading uh, video, I'm going to finish up on the rules and go through some more recent examples of uh, the time and price patterns and some of the confirming signals, and then uh, conclude with some uh, uh, remarks concerning what it really takes to, to trade in this fashion. Uh, but I want to finish up the, uh, the 36 rules uh, first, and then we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, the rule 27 where we left off was look for price uh, rejection and that's the difference between uh, knowing what stop running is and the, the genuine trend late in the day. Uh, it's important uh, to understand on one minute bars the relationship of the closing end of the bar to the bar itself. In other words, if you have a sharp spike down as it goes in the new low ground, and the market closes the bar on the high of that bar, chances are it isn't going down anymore. In other words, the bottom was made, and now it's going to go up. And you'll see the reverse uh, at, the, at the top. Again, if you're short and you need to take profits, hopefully you've taken them before that happens. Because once it happens, the snap back is typically uh, so fast that you're not going to get a very good uh, fill. Uh, by the way, when it comes to fills, most of the time when people complain, it's not uh, a factor of your broker not doing a good job. The fact of the matter is, at that moment when it hit the pit, the market was going the other way, and that you had to, if you were buying, you had to pay up to buy, or you had to sell it at, at a, if you were selling, you had to sell it at a, an exceptionally bad price. And the reason is, is the tide had turned, the market had moved that way, and most of the people in the uh, uh, pit were either buyers or sellers. Uh, so that's what I find in most of the time. Rarely, uh, there's a rare occasion when the broker really does do a poor job, and typically, if you speak up, they'll make good on that. But most of the time, it's if, if you get time in sales, you can go back and look at it, and you'll see these tops and bottoms are not made in a leisurely fashion. Uh, on the contrary, they're, they're made in panic, they happen in seconds, and uh, to get a fill 100, to even 200 points away from where the market was a minute earlier is not that unusual. So I you need to know these things, and the price rejection typically tells you uh, that the, the tide has turned and it's going the other way. So the tops and bottoms are not made, uh, like I said, in a leisurely fashion, they're made quickly. Uh, the market will go up, make a top, snap back, and then run the other, other, other way. Uh, and it's the price rejection, what I call price rejection, that, that signals that, that move. On page 141, I've got uh, the market trading down uh, limit here. As you see here, this is a limit down move when it can't go any lower. It comes off limit for a second, goes a little higher, and then it's slammed down. And then once that ultimate low is made, only then is it free uh, to go back up again. On, on 142, I've got the relationship of the closing bar to the bar signals uh, the, the price rejection. In other words, at the top, it makes a new high, but the close of the bar, it's at the bottom, and it goes the other way. At the bottom over here, it makes the low, and the very next close of the bar is higher, and then it will go uh, the other way. Here on, on 143, we've got a, if you were to sell the gap opening, you'll notice that the, the very next bar, it's at the high of the bar, and that signals that, again, uh, it's probably not going down. And after, after 12 minutes goes by, and it hasn't, gone down, then you know it's probably going up. And that leads us to rule 28, which is that, that you want to time every trade. Every time I get in a trade, I use my stopwatch uh, to tell me how long I've been in that. You'd be surprised. Sometimes you can be in a trade three or four minutes, and it feels like a half an hour uh, because you're on edge when you're in there. And, uh, and I'm, I'm always looking at how much time has passed and ha have we made any progress. And what I'll do is I'll then say, OK, the, the, the buyers aren't winning. The losers aren't winning. We have a stalemate here, but I'll give it a few more minutes. And once that few more minutes goes by, if you're not making progress on the trade, 
often it pays just to get out, to scratch it or lose a little or even make a little and start over again. So you want to time every trade. And you've got to remember the reason for this. The only reason for getting in the market is because you think that trade's going to work. You don't think it's going to work a half hour from now or 20 minutes from now. You think it's going to work now. That's why you got in at this point in time. Now, obviously, you're not going to be right all the time. You'll be premature. You'll be too late or whatever. But, but when you, t to get in and have the market die on you is a bad sign. So that's, when, that's where the timing really helps. Uh, it's especially true when you fade gaps. And if it doesn't work uh, soon, it's better to get out and start over. Now, occasionally, you'll get out of a good trade, have it go your way, and say, why did I get out? But more often, when you're in a trade and it's not working, it's, it pays to get out because uh, it, it may go uh, a negative on you. On 145, again, I've got that notion of the, the time. There's a gap down. You buy it on the gap down, thinking it will trade up, fill the gap. The there is an initial rally, but it's short-lived. And when that fails, you have to get out immediately. Um, rule 2029 uh, goes to this notion of the psychology of the market. Uh, it's been my experience that you always want to ask yourself, what could the market do to fool the greatest number of people? And I've seen this happen so many times over the years that I've, I've grown accustomed to the perverse nature of the market, especially the S&Ps. Uh, you buy it. And it'll go sideways for a while. Then there'll be a trip down in which you're ready to pull the plug, and only then will it go higher. Or you'll sell it. Uh, it'll go sideways for a, mo for a while. It'll start to break out to the upside. You may panic and buy it. And then it'll come back in the consolidation, and the bottom will fall out. I've seen this happen over and over repeatedly over the years. And I think that if you're aware of this tendency of the market to do the very opposite of what you think, you'll you'll do well. Uh, I've had people call me and say, you can't believe the bad luck I've had. Every time I buy it, it goes down. And every time I sell it, it goes up. Well, I can believe it, because I know what they're thinking, that it should go the way they want it to as soon as they get in, and it doesn't. But you have to understand that this is the nature of the, certainly the S&Ps, the market in, in general. One other rule on, on, on that subject has to do with the one tick new highs and lows, uh, which you see. For years, I traded bonds. And you'd have, a, say, a high in bonds of, of, say, just to pick a number, 110, 16, and a low of, say, one tick of one, 110, 08. And then you'll come back, and the new high will be one, 110, 17, and it'll be trading at 12. And you go, what's going on here? Well, what happened is they just took out that high by one tick, and that's the signal when it comes back in that it's going down, not up, and vice versa at the bottom. You have an 08, say, low, and it goes to 07 and then back into 08, 09, uh, 10, and so on. And then, you, then, it, then it will go up. So that's what I mean about uh, when I say, what's, what can the market do that will fool the greatest uh, number of people? And I, and I write here often, this is the precise scenario that, plays, that is played out. The market shoots higher only to reverse and plunge, or it goes, goes sideways only to break down. So it's good to be aware of that. Uh, and you see that uh, even on the trips to the 618 retracement. On, on 147, we've got a, a leg, a 17-minute leg of 300 points. We have an equilibrium. We have the 618 drawn in. Where does it go? Right exactly to the tick to the 618. And then it goes, goes lower. Um, uh, about a year ago, I was trading the S&Ps one day. This is uh, on a Friday afternoon before the uh, uh, before they cut the contract in half. And I, I was like short four or six, I don't remember. And then I sold more on a rally. And then I said, I'll sell, I'll sell more on the next rally up, but that's got to work. Well, it came, it rallied against me. So now I'm, I'm, I'm short, I'm short higher. And then I sold more, and even that went against me. And I hadn't done my homework this day. For whatever reason, I was thinking about the money, not the trade. And I panicked and bought them all back. Well. You know where it went to, don't you? It went to the 618 where it was supposed to go. I bought it right there, and then it plunged just like I thought it would. And, and instead of making $10,000, I lost 9000 So I remember these kind of days when I make these uh, mistakes. Now, if you think about these things beforehand, if you have the numbers written down, you're much less likely 
to make these kind of mental mistakes where you're thinking all of a sudden about how much money you're losing instead of uh, where the market should go. So that's the key thing is to remember where is the market likely to go and how should I, should I trade it, not trading on emotion. 